So the adaptive information processing model, AIP, is like the 3D glasses that you wear when you go to the cinema to watch a 3D movie. It allows you to bring everything into focus, but in a meaningful and rich way. You could try to watch the movie without the 3D glasses. You could probably watch it, it would probably give you a bit of a headache. Things wouldn't be entirely clear. There would be some semblance of what the movie was, but it would be a much uh, poorer image. It would not really make sense in the way that it does make sense when the glasses are on. AIP is the lens through which the EMDR therapist views the entire case that they're working with. And we know from the first published paper by Roger Solomon and Dr. Francine Shapiro, who articulated the model, that AIP does three things. It explains pathology, it directs therapeutic endeavor, and it predicts outcome. Let's take a look at those three things. So first of all, AIP explains pathology. AIP tells us that within each of us, we have an inborn, innate system of information processing. And that day in, day out, we have a myriad of data around us that we take in through our five senses. There has to be a way that some of that information is taken in and makes its way into long-term storage. And there has to be another way where lots of the other information isn't stored and indeed is actually digested and gotten rid of. Whenever you eat a beautiful meal, much of the energy of that meal is taken and integrated into our bodies and utilized for us as we exist in the world. But also quite a lot of it gets eliminated out the other end. It's exactly the same with the data that comes into our mind. Whenever we have information coming, listening to me talking about AIP as an example, some of that information I hope will make its way into your long-term memory storage, but much of it isn't necessary. You won't need to remember what my bow tie was like the day that I taught about AIP. So AIP for you as a therapist will allow you to say to your client, you're coming to talk about your problems with obsessive compulsive disorder or depression or hearing voices. And I want to explain to you a meaningful system of understanding why you're experiencing what you're experiencing. And I'm going to use the AIP model to do that because what happens in trauma is that that system becomes overwhelmed, it gets derailed, and instead of that information flowing through the system, what we get instead is information which is dysfunctionally linked within your central nervous system. That then acts like a focus of infection, if you will, a nidus, where we have vulnerabilities. And the problem is that then drives these other problems. So the dysfunctionally linked material is the thing that then drives an attempted adaptation to that, which could be depressive, it could be psychosis, it could be obsessive compulsive disorder. So we use AIP to help a person to understand fundamentally that they are not biologically broken rather that they are understandably disordered by the extreme set of circumstances that they have experienced in their life by doing that it gives the person a message of hope but for the therapist it does another vitally important thing and that is that it directs therapeutic endeavor so i'm now not going to focus on um, your uh, wanting to wash your hands 15 times. I'm not going to focus on your depression. What I'm going to look for is the thing that is driving that. And that is the second pillar of AIP, that it directs therapeutic endeavor. So I'm now going to work on your childhood bullying experiences, or I'm now going to work on your childhood sexual abuse, or I'm now going to work on um, your attachment trauma and uh, difficulties within the family of finding a forever home as a child who was abandoned at birth. And the last pillar is that it exp uh, explains the outcome that if we have gotten the target right, if we have directed our therapeutic endeavor to work on that target, then it would be predictive of outcome in that we would expect the OCD to reduce or we would expect the voice hearing to reduce, or we would expect the depression to lift. And so there's a lovely check within it 
that if we've gotten the right target, that if we've responded to that target correctly with therapeutic endeavor, that we then expect to see things better. And if we look at illnesses that weren't typically seen as being impacted or driven by trauma, such as psychosis, this is indeed what the research showed, that whenever we worked on the trauma targets from earlier on in that person's life, we directed ourselves to work on those as therapists explaining the experience of psychosis through the lens of trauma, that actually what we saw was that the person's voice hearing or psychotic symptoms decreased. So those three pillars are what are going to equip you as a therapist. AIP does the three things, explains pathology, directs therapeutic endeavor, and predicts outcome.